Uh, Bob, in uh, Forrest Gump last night, uh, the scene with Elvis Presley, it really made me think of I Want to Hold Your Hand. Mm. Now, let's go back to that movie for a minute. Right. How difficult a film was that to make legally with all the uh, Beatle trademarks and uh, mm. uh, requirements that they had? Um, well, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it, there was only one um, legal issue, which is that MCA w had to indemnify CBS for letting us use the Ed Sullivan Show footage. And, um, you know, that's where Sid Scheinberg, who was running the studio at the time, said uh, that he would take the risk if, if for no other reason, if he got sued by the Beatles, he'd all get, a, he'd get them all together in a courtroom and they'd, you know, he'd call it a reunion. <laughs> now, another uh, a huge hit for you was uh, Back to the Future. Now, I know that film started with another actor in the lead role. Mm -hmm. What did you see in those first few weeks of shooting that made you decide to replace Eric Stoltz with, with Michael J. Fox? What didn't work? Um, well, it was all my fault. I, you know, I, I realized that I had, I had cast the wrong actor in the part. It had nothing to do with Eric's performance or his... Uh, ability to do the part. I just felt that um, the character needed to have another dimension that wasn't part of, you know, Eric's, Eric's um, uh, instrument, if you will. And that was, and I, you know, you know, regretted being forced into starting the picture until, you know, you know, until I had the right guy. What is your, your attitude about sequels per se? Like with Back to the Future, was it automatic that you were going to do a sequel, or did you have to struggle for a while with that? No, it wasn't. Everyone thinks it was some large design that, you know, but uh, sequels only um, are talked about after a film is successful. They're never talked about until the film comes out, and they don't usually make sequels to unsuccessful films. I don't think they ever have. Um, so it was an after-the-fact idea, and my feeling about sequels is that they're kind of a love, the audience has a love-hate relationship with them. They want them to be the same but different, and uh, it's, a hard, it's a hard form to work in. Now, with Forrest Gump, uh, amazingly intense combat scenes. I don't think I ever saw a combat scene with tracers, with, with a battle like that. How intense was that for you to shoot as a filmmaker? Were you pretty much on edge? Yeah, well, I'm always, you're always on edge whenever you're, you're working around uh, gunfire and explosions because, you know, you're always worried that someone's going to possibly get hurt or there'll be a misfire or somebody will stand on a mortar or, you know, and they're, you know whenever, even though you're shooting blanks, those, you know, wads flying out of those guns are very, very, very dangerous. And, and so, yeah, that was a very edgy time. Shooting in Washington, D.C., I know, must present special headaches. I remember uh, Wolfgang Peterson with, in the Atlanta Fire had special roadblocks. How, well, what special problems did, were presented to you shooting in D.C.? Um, well, we, we actually, the D.C. shoot went, went very smooth. The only thing that, um, the only thing that was, um, we only had one little problem, I remember, which is, See, the monuments, you can't close the monuments. In other words, you, know, like the, you can't shut down the Lincoln Memorial. So if you're going to shoot, you have to figure out a way to shoot and allow people to go in and go out. And we had all these demonstrators on the stairs of Lincoln Memorial, and they were chanting old, you know, anti-war slogans from the 60s. And then the park officers came and said that we, yeah, that we were scaring some of the tourists because they thought maybe it was a real demonstration. And we said, well, we only have to shoot for a few more minutes. Luckily, it was at the end of the day. They let us finish. Now, this film, I mean, everyone loves it. And it has Oscar uh, written all over it. When you were first sitting down to make this film, did you was that in the back of your mind? This movie has Oscar potential. Like honestly, you know, honestly, I really never, never think about that. I mean, I mean, I think that um, you know, uh, you know, my my true um, satisfaction comes from making films that can move and entertain an audience, and awards are, are not really something that I think about. Okay. And one final question, we're doing a piece on the mementos that actors or filmmakers mm -hmm. keep from films. Over the years, what kind of specific items from specific films have you kept? Um, I keep um, every, I, I, I um, take the, um, the uh, slate, the marker, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. at the end of every show, after the last shot, the last take of the last shot. And those are, that's what I keep. 